this is X-Ray Bob. Our topic for this video is Planck's quantum equation. All right, Planck's quantum equation tells us that energy is calculated by multiplying frequency in hertz by Planck's constant. And that's a new number for you to memorize. 4.15 times 10 to the negative 15th electron volt seconds. That's probably the most useful one to memorize. The other format sometimes useful is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. All right, so this tells us that we can calculate that the energy of a photon given the frequency of, of the photon um, because the energy of the photon is directly proportional to its frequency. Now, you remember that from the wave equation, uh, we can say that frequency equals the speed of light divided by wavelength for any electromagnetic wave. So rather than talking about Planck's quantum equation as energy equals Planck's constant times frequency, we can turn it around and say energy equals speed of light times Planck's constant divided by wavelength. So we can calculate the energy given a, given a wavelength or given a frequency. So that leads us to this triangle of formulas energy equals frequency times uh, Planck's constant if we have a frequency or energy equals speed of light times Planck's constant over wavelength and if we have a wavelength we can always calculate the frequency and if we have the frequency we can always calculate the wavelength. So let's do a problem. What is the frequency of an 85 keV x-ray? Our given is the energy is 85 keV. What we're going to solve for is the frequency. So we're going to do the math. We'll need a formula. We come in here, we say, all right, I got frequency and I want energy. So I'll pick this formula. So energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. And we're going to need to know Planck's constant. And it's either one of these two. But again, let's look at the problem. The problem's talking about KeV. So we better pick Planck's constant with E electron volts because units are oh so important. All right, so we write down Planck's constant, we write down our formula, we're halfway there. So now with a little algebra, we can flip that formula around to say frequency equals energy divided by Planck's constant, 85 keV divided by 4.15 times 10 to the negative 15th EVS. Oh wait, I see keV in the numerator and EVS in the EVs in the denominator. I better convert I better lose that kilo electron volts and just call it 85,000 electron volts. Hey, get out of the garbage, Charlie. And now I've got the same units in numerator and denominator. So frequency turns out to equal 2 times 10 to the 19th per seconds. 1 over seconds. Well, 1 over seconds is hertz. So 2 times 10 to the 19th hertz is my answer. Let's circle that and make it obvious to Professor Bob. All right, question number two. What's the energy of one photon of red light whose wavelength is 635 nanometers? Identify the givens. 635 nanometers is our wavelength. What are we going to solve for? We're going to solve for energy. So to do the math, we'll need a formula. So in this case, we've got wavelength and we're solving for energy. So this guy looks like our formula to go with. So we'll write that down over here. And we're going to need Planck's constant. We could pick either. We could because we're solving for energy. So we can either report energy in electron volts or joules. Either way, we'll use the electron volts because we're x-ray, we're radiographers, and we're always talking about KVP. All right, so we write that down too. Now we just plug and chug. Energy equals the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, times Planck's constant, 4.15 times 10 to the negative 15th electron volt seconds, divided by 635 nanometers. Uh-oh! I got meters up top and nanometers down below. Good thing I've got all my numeric prefixes memorized. Nanometers mean it's 10 to the negative ninth meters. So there's a 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter, a billion nanometers in one meter. So I got this conversion factor, 10 to the negative ninth meters in one nanometer, so that my nanometers will drop out. And I can just be talking about meters in the numerator and the denominator. So I won't have a units problem. And that comes out to be 1.96 electron volts. Better circle it, make it obvious. All right, question three. Question three looks harder, but it's actually easier. So stick with me. All right, 
Planck's constant times the speed of light is 12.4 when you're solving for wavelength in angstroms from energy in kilovolts. If the shortest wavelength in an x-ray beam is 0.11 angstroms, what is the kvp of this x-ray beam? We haven't gotten there yet, but kvp is the maximum kilovoltage, and you're going to see that with the minimum wavelength, because again, frequency and wavelength are inversely related. Okay, so we'll identify our givens. Wavelength is 0.11 angstroms, and what are we solving for? Energy. So we'll go figure out our equation. We better take that energy one with that's got wavelength in it. And we're going to need to know what an angstrom is. So an angstrom is often shown as this unit, a little a with a little circle on it, and that's 10 to the negative 10th meters. Okay, so we can plug and chug 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second times 4.15 times 10 to the negative 15th electron volts per second divided by 0.11 angstroms. And then we could start working on converting our angstroms to meters because we got meters up here. But wait, let's read that again. Read the brown sentence. Planck's constant times the speed of light is 12.4 when you're solving for wavelength in angstroms from energy in kilovolts. That means they've already done it. They've said 12.4 angstrom kilovolts per second is our, is our whole numerator. Time, and we'll just divide that by 0.11 angstroms. So they set it up so we didn't have to know what an angstrom is. We didn't have to convert... Uh, electron volts to kilo electron volts or angstroms to meters or speed of light in angstroms per second. They set it up so we wouldn't have to do the unit conversions. All right, so like I said, that first sentence looks scary, but it actually took care of a lot of the unit conversions for us. And boom, 113 kVp is our answer. Circle it, make it obvious. All right, my thanks go out to Quinn Carroll for some of his example problems and Dr. Bouchong for some of his example problems. This is X-Ray Bob, signing out. Catch you later.